So I have this uh, fantastic ability to do things in the most backwards, roundabout way possible, and then only after some gross amount of time, finally doing it in a way that makes, you know, any sense. So I have three hacks or habits I just started to do within these last couple years or so, and I don't see other people uh, talk about as much. I didn't invent any of these, I just don't want to share the same old things that I personally see other people share over and over. If you don't know who I am, I'm Abby Esparza, and if you don't know where you are, uh, you're tuned into photo manipulation. Com. So I've definitely mentioned this one before, a window arrange new window for. This creates a second instance of your current document. If I paint on one, it'll show up on the other. But even more importantly is that they can move independently of each other. So I can zoom in nice and close on one while keeping the other zoomed out full frame or even uh, further for more of a thumbnail preview. And as every modern day artist knows, it's the thumbnail that sells, uh, for better or for worse. But even beyond that, whether you're compositing, painting, or retouching, when you're zoomed in for too long, you can kinda end up you know, losing the plot a little. That detail might look great at 100% zoom, only to look horrible when pulled back to a size closer to what it will most likely be viewed at, you know, some standard web size. New Window 4 lets you work nice and close without constantly zooming in and out again. It might take up a bit of your screen real estate, especially on a typical 27 inch 1080p monitor, but I still 100% recommend it. I personally use two 4K screens, my 32 inch Cintiq and then a 34 inch widescreen monitor. So I work on the image using the Cintiq and I keep that zoomed out reference on my second monitor. I mention this because I actually do recommend two monitors to all artists. They don't have to be 4K or anything like that. Any two monitors are better than one monitor. It's just one of the best ways to improve your workflow slash productivity. But that's a whole other uh, video topic. You know, all that aside, at the very least, if you do book or CD covers where the thumbnail really is the money maker, you 100% want to be using new window 4. All you retouchers uh, as well. Next up, let's talk about using smart objects to preserve layer masks. Uh, smart objects are magical in general, but this is a more specific way that I've been using them for uh, about two years now. Uh, give or take, I, I don't know time. I'm a portrait artist that tries to keep a certain level of photorealism. Not too much, but not <laughs> going totally off the walls. Uh, so for me, the quality of my extractions just matters a whole lot on an emotional level, I guess. A rule or more so tip a lot of people learn early on is to extract your body first and then the hair second. That way the uh, select and mask or other auto select tools you'll likely use on the hair don't end up messing with your body mask. So for years, I masked the body, merged the layer mask, and then masked the hair. But what if you notice something is off about the body mask? Maybe the edge is too harsh or you chopped off too much of a finger. So I came up with a fix. While not non-destructive, it at least allowed me to fix what needed fixing. Mask the subject's body, duplicate, hide that duplicate, and then merge the mask and do the hair. So if I need to change the body mask, I go back to the copy, make the changes, recopy, and hide the new copy, just in case. And then I control click on the hair mask to get a selection and remask the hair onto the new body. It's both annoying to do and annoying to explain. Now the idea of editing non-destructively was also pounded into my head a long, long time ago. I hate to flatten or merge anything ever. So I find did the big brain move uh, to just mask the body, right click convert to smart object, and then mask the hair. Your body mask is now tucked away safe and protected from refined edge ever messing with it. And oh, you need to uh, fiddle with the body? Just double click, make your changes, and save. It doesn't just have to be a single layer with a mask, you can use the same technique to preserve anything you might have originally flattened. Like sometimes I have to do some retouching. So my workflow might be a retouch on the base layer, extract the body, convert to smart object, extract the hair. And then if you want to mask the whole subject but don't want to compromise the body and hair you just took an hour to extract, well then convert to smart object once again. Now I have my subject all prepped and ready to go. If I see something wonky on the retouch layers, I can click through and fix it. Uh, kind of like a Russian uh, nesting doll. Maybe give nesting masks a, a try yourself using one of the 100 free images in our free image pack, link below. 
And finally, let's all wrap things up with apply any last edits, especially through Camera Raw, to one giant smart object. As in, turn the whole PSD, yes, the whole thing, into one giant smart object, and then use smart filters to make your final global edits. I used to make a flattened copy of my whole PSD and then turn that into a smart object and then use Camera Raw on that layer. But if I need to edit the main image, which I almost always do, I almost always need to make some kind of last second edit, I'd have to make a new flattened copy, turn that into a smart object, and drag the Camera Raw uh, from the old version onto the new. It's just very annoying to me. But then one day I was like, why not one big smart object? That way I just click in, keep editing, uh, save and check what the true final image looks like in the main PSD. I'll remember how I said I have two screens. Well, suppose I've turned the whole PSD into a smart object and now I'm editing inside of that object. In that case, I throw the main PSD onto the second monitor so I can watch it update as I save. There are a few downsides to this though. Uh, mainly when inside a smart object, the canvas will be as big as its largest layer. So if you have any huge layers that were originally cropped, they are going to make the smart object's canvas uh, just as huge. And we're talking like uh, 10,000 pixels huge. The crops applied to the main canvas, but now that you're in that smart object, you're seeing everything. Uh, kinda like uh, looking into a window of a house versus being inside of the house. Now, this isn't a big deal, uh, just a minor inconvenience and something you might notice. I tried to save this step for very, very last. Like I said, it's just for those final global adjustments, not even the primary color grade. You can even unpack smart objects now, uh, converting them back into standard layers, so there's minimal risk to trying this out. Though I do hear uh, smart objects are rough on some computers, so if your computer sucks, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, did I blow your mind? Probably not. I'm a practical gal who likes practical advice. But I did all this stupid sh for years, so now you don't have to. You can check out this video if you want to see me complain about Photoshop for six minutes. A salty is clearly my true state of being nowadays. And maybe a like if you like, subscribe if you really like. And with that, I'm Abby Esparza with PhotoManipulation.com. See you next time, guys.